Hello everyone, how are you doing? Frost Knight here. In this video is gonna be obliteration guide for Mythical Blast and for Raid. Now I don't remember I made a specific video for obliteration before, <clears throat> so this is gonna be my first guide for obliteration build. I will explain everything about the stats and what gears you should have and also the rotation. I will mainly focus on the rotation on this video so you know everything, uh, when to use your abilities and everything about the obliteration build for single target and for AoE. Okay guys, let's begin with the stats. Now, when it comes for the stats for obliteration, the only thing you should focus on, the first thing you should focus on, is try to get 26% haste. It doesn't matter how much item level you have, you want to try to get 26% haste and don't care about the other stat, don't care about critical strike or mastery. Just focus on getting 26% haste. And after that, you can focus on the critical and the mastery. Now, mastery is more uh, priority than critical strike, but there is like a value where critical strike becomes better than mastery. Like when you have 60 to 65% mastery, you should get critical strike because the tier sets now uh, works with the critical strike. Now, of course, mastery buffs the damage of obliterate, but a critical strike can also be useful, especially on single targets, so you can have more pillar cooldown because when you press frost strike uh, and the frost strike gets a critical strike, you're gonna get less cooldown on pillar of frost. And same thing with mythical blast. The more critical strike you have, the dragon gonna crit and all the target gonna do so much damage. So you shouldn't always just focus on haste mastery. You should also get some. Uh, critical strike, but not a lot, just like 30% critical strike, I think is enough. So after you get 26% haste, you want to go into mastery. And between 60 to 65 mastery, you can go into critical strike. Now versatility doesn't matter, so you shouldn't really focus about getting versatility. Okay guys, now for the talents, this is the talent build for Mythical Blast I'm running with. Now, some people go with Enduring Strength instead of the Icy Breaker, but I prefer Icy Breaker more because uh, Rhyme Brock is very important now with the tier set and inside Pillar of Frost Rhyme is doing so much damage because it also gives you strength uh, from Pillar. So uh, I want to focus more on giving Grime more damage, but some people uh, like to go with Enduring Strength. Now, Personally, I prefer that when you play with obliteration, your highest burst come from Pillar of a Frost. So Enduring Strength work outside Pillar, so I don't think it's very important to have Strength outside your burst uh, cooldown. But they, they, are, they are very close to each other. Some people play Enduring Strength and doing so much damage. I personally like Icy Breaker for more single target. Okay guys, this is for single target and for raid build mostly. We go with 2 point into Icy Breaker for more single target damage. And we don't go with absolute zero, we're just enough with the single dragon. And we go with 2 points into Enduring Strength and 1 point into Frostwolf 8. Now with the fight is have like add spawning, you should go with less point into Enduring Strength and go with 2 points into Frostwolf 8 because it's gonna give you more mastery. But it if, it's, if the fight is like a three targets and above. Alright guys, now let's talk about the gears, uh, trinkets, weapons and everything. So your top of trinkets you should, all, you should have when you play with the filtration for both single target and AoE. The first one is the Veil of Animated Blood. This one dropped from under root. And uh, it's have 1 minute and 30 second cooldown. So the good thing about it that now, normally, Pillar of uh, Frost cooldown is about 40 seconds to 45 seconds. So, the cooldown of Pillar of Frost match perfectly with this trinket. So, this is why it's very good with the obliteration build. <clears throat> now, the second, uh, the passive best passive trinket is the one dropped from Echo of Nertharian. This trinket is the best trinket you, you can have, and it's really good. Uh, also, the back from the last boss is very good. You should always have it, but I don't have it right now. For the necklace, I am running the elemental uh, laret for the uh, embellishment, let's say. 
and also I'm running the embellishment that give you mastery above 90% health. This is, I think this is the best embellishment for uh, obliteration build. As you see, I'm getting 364 mastery at 447 item level, which is a lot of mastery. And the best two-handed weapon is also the one from Echo of Naltharian, but it's not that good in Mythic Plus because it's only doing like 1% overall damage. So if you have a weapon that is more item level, uh, you should equip it in Mythic Plus. But for single target, the Echo of Naltharian weapon is going to be better because on single target it works better, especially if the boss is uh, a human kind because he do, uh, the weapon deal double damage on a human kind. Now for the tier set, if you have 5 tier set, the item that you should change is the shoulder. Because now the chest might give you versatility, but it gives you more haste, which is haste is also very important when you play either with the Breath of Syndicosa or Obliteration. But uh, the shoulder gives you more versatility than Critical Strike. Yeah, so the only the item that you should change is the shoulder, and you can keep the other items. This is if you have 5 tier set, because you can only use 4 tier sets. So first I'm going to talk about the Mythic Blast rotation, uh, since a lot of people asking me how to do my rotation and everything. So whenever you're going into the pack, the first thing you want to hit is Ampunition Limb. Make sure that the tank is already pulled and have aggro on the mobs, because you're going to get so much aggro if the tank is still uh, didn't get aggro. So you want to start with Ampunition Limp. Now, on high keys, if the mobs are going to survive for very long, use the Rhyme Brock you got from Ampunition Limp. But if it's low key and you know that everyone is going to just blast the mobs and kill them in like in 10 seconds, don't use it. Just immediately use your Moses Winter after Ampunition Limp. And then use a uh, Empower Rune Weapon. Yeah, use Empower Rune Weapon with a Trinket and Potion. Then use Death and Decay with Pillar at the same time. And the Rhyme Brock you get from Remosus Winter, use it to get the first Killing Machine Brock. And after that, you just keep you hit Killing Machine. And then you press uh, Glacial Advance if it's AoE or a Frost Strike if it's single target. And then hit Killing Machine again. So make sure inside Pillar of a Frost that you get as much Killing Machine Brocks as you can by either hitting Frost Strike or Glacial Advance if it's AoE or single target. Now, when you press the Glacial Advance and when you press the Frost Strike. Now, let's say you fight, now if you're fighting a pack of two mobs or sometimes like a three mobs and you know that this pack is gonna die like super fast, but you press Pillar on it. Now, it's better to press a Frost Strike, not the Glacial Advance. Now, I know Glacial Advance can do more damage, but uh, if the pack gonna die like in 10 seconds and you're pressing Glacial Advance for the next pack, like after the next pack, you will not gonna have Pillar of a Frost. It's gonna be like 40 second cooldown and you're probably not gonna use it on the next pack because they're probably gonna die super fast and you're gonna save it again for the, th for the third pack, like after it. So you're gonna lose so much damage. So it's better when you're fighting two or three mobs and you know that these mobs gonna like die like super fast. Uh, it's better to press to press a frost strike because a frost strike have uh, also when it, when a frost strike get a critical strike, it's gonna reduce the the cooldown of pillar of frost. All right, I'm gonna do my rotation very slow, and then I'm gonna do it fast just to, just just to show you what you should do in mythic plus. Now let's say you pop lost. Now there's. When, if you pop lost or getting PI, and if you don't get lost. Now, if you get lost and PI, when you press Amp Initial Limb, you press the Rhyme Brock, and then rem press Remosis Winter. But if you didn't get any haste buff, you press uh, Amp Initial Limb, and don't press the Rhyme Brock, just press Remosis Winter, and press down Empower Rune Weapon, and put down Death and Decay with Pillar, and just use the Rhyme Brock from Remosis Winter, to get the first killing machine proc. Because you're gonna have uh, the amount of time you're gonna do all of that is gonna be like four seconds, but with haste, you're gonna do it like in two seconds, so it's gonna be much faster. But the pack gonna like die super fast, so you should be 
a bit slower. All right, guys, let's begin. So I'm pressing ammunition limb. I have Rhyme Brock, but I'm not going to press it if I don't have haste buff. Instead, I'm going to press Remorseless Winter, and then Empower Rune Weapon with the Trinket, put down Death and DK, press Pillar, and then press the Rhyme Brock so I can get my first Killing Machine, and then press Killing Machine. If you got a second one, press it also again. And just keep pressing, uh, keep pressing Obliterate until you have no Killing Machine procs. If you're out of Killing Machine procs, you should press Glacial Advance or Frost Strike, depends on if you're fighting AoE fight or single target fight. Alright guys, I'm gonna do the rotation again a bit faster this time, just to show you how much damage you should deal. So as I said, you start with Ammunition Limb, Remorseless Winter, and then you, you press uh, Empower Rune Weapon. You press Pillar and Death and Decay at the same time, since Pillar Frost doesn't have a global cooldown. And then you press the Rhyme Brock, and then you start hitting Killing Machines until you have no Killing Machines. And then you press the Glacial Advance or a Frost Strike, depends if you're fighting AoE or single target, just to get Killing Machine Brock and then use it again. Okay. So Rhyme, Killing Machine, another Killing Machine, Rhyme again. Now it's better to press Rhyme if you, if you have it. And on the last second, you press uh, your dragon. But let me, one second, my weak power doesn't work. Okay, guys, I'm gonna do it again without empowering weapons. It says it's a um, cooldown. So if you don't have empowering weapon or ammunition limb, you just simply press Remorseless Winter, uh, press Pillar with Death and DK, and the Rhyme Brock from Remorseless Winter, you use it to get the Killing Machine Brock. Okay? Okay, sorry, Master Winter, Pillar with Death and DK, then I use my Rhyme Brock, then I hit my Killing Machine until I don't have a Killing Machines, and then press the Glacier Advance, AoE. Now, on the last second, you want to use your Dragon. Uh, don't wait until Pillar ends, just use it whenever you have a Dragon. Alright, guys, I'm gonna do the rotation once again. This time I'm gonna do it fast, so you need to focus. I'm not gonna slow it down so you can see what I'm pressing, but here we go. Okay guys, so this is what the your rotation inside the pillar. Now outside pillar of frost, what you should focus on is Remorseless Winter. And uh, you want to use the second charge of death and DK right when pillar ends. So whenever on the last two seconds of pillar of frost, you're probably gonna have like two if you have two killing machine brocks, make sure that you put down the second death and DK if you have it, and then use the two the two stacks of uh, killing machines. Now, after that, you want to focus on Remorseless Winter. So make sure that you spend runes uh, inside Remorseless Winter by hitting Obliterate and Rhyme. And whenever you close to cap on, uh, on Runic Power, you press the Glacial Advance. So you want to press Obliterate as much as you can, especially inside Death and DK, even outside Pillar of Frost. And make sure that you use all your Rhyme Brocks. <clears throat> and whenever you close to capping on uh, Runic Power, you want to press the Glacial Advance. And whenever Remorseless Winter ends, you want to empty all your Runic Power with the Glacial Advance. Now, if you if the pack is about to die, you shouldn't focus too much on Remorseless Winter, you can just immediately start using Glacial Advance. Just empty all your Runic Power with the Glacial Advance. But if the pack is going to survive for a bit longer, you need to focus more on Remorseless Winter until it ends and then press the Glacial Advance and empty all your Runic Power. So this is your rotation outside your Pillar of Frost. So I'm gonna do it again for you. So let's say you don't have Pillar, 
only you have uh, your master winter. So you just press the master winter and make sure that you press every rhyme you broke. And you just keep hitting complete rate. And whenever you're close to cab or runic power, you just press the glacial advance. So I don't have runes. So now the master winter on cooldown, so I just empty all my uh, runic power and then press the master winter again immediately whenever it's ready so you don't lose your ever frost stacks and you just keep spending runes and make sure that you press all your rhyme broke rhyme is very important because it then increases the damage of uh, the master winter and also increases the damage of the dragon from the from the tier set so don't miss any rhyme broke Actually, if you're running Icy Breaker, Rhyme gonna do more damage than in Glacial Advance. So Glacial Advance is only to empty your runic power. It's not like a very important ability to press. It's just to empty your runic power and when you don't have Rhyme, you press the Glacial Advance. So Glacial Advance is the last option to press. Make sure that you focus more on Rhyme procs. Now for the Trinket, you don't really need to wait until you have Empower Rune Weapon. You can just use it with Pillar of Frost. So, macro the trinket with Pillar of Frost, not with the Empower Rune Weapon. It's gonna be better. You only press Empower Rune Weapon whenever you have it ready, and you have Pillar of Cold, Pillar of Frost also ready at the same time. So, make sure that you press Empower Rune Weapon with Pillar, and also trinket with Pillar, so you don't have to wait, like hold the Pillar or, or hold the trinket for Empower Rune Weapon. You just use it whenever Pillar of Frost is ready, because your highest damage come uh, from Pillar of a Frost, and Power Open just give you extra haste, so you don't have to worry uh, to wait a lot uh, on your items or ability just for Power Open. You can just use them whenever Pillar of a Frost is ready, unless there is like a few seconds left. So, for example, Pillar is ready, but in Power Open have like, let's say 10 seconds. If the pack gonna survive longer than 10 seconds, you can wait, but if you feel the pack is gonna die like super fast. Uh, you don't have to wait. So it all depends on uh, on the dungeon and how high is the dungeon is. This is where your rotation is changed. So for example, on high keys, you want to focus on the Moses Winter more by spending runes and only press the Glacial Advance outside your Moses Winter. But on low keys and when the pack is about to die, you don't really need to focus, even if Ramosa's Winter is up, just don't spend rune, just empty all your runic power with the Glacial Advance. Because the Glacial Advance uh, deal more damage than Ramosa's Winter uh, AoE taking. Now, unless the pack is, is surrounding you from every, from every side, because the Glacial Advance only deal damage in a line, and Ramosa's Winter deal AoE damage from all the mobs around you, so you need to you need to position yourself in a way that the glacial advance hits all the target. Now, if you can't do that, then just keep focusing on uh, buffing your master's winter damage. Now, same thing with pillar of a frost. Make sure you're facing yourself in a position that pillar of a frost gonna hit all the mobs, so you can apply the the the, uh, the twenty percent more damage debuff on all the targets. So, for example, you're fighting a back like this. And you position yourself wrong that pillar only hit like one mob or like two mobs so always make sure that you position yourself in the right way that pillar of a frost gonna hit all the targets so you can apply the 20 second more damage debuff on all the targets this is very important if you want to do uh, good damage now for the macros that people asking me about my macros i'm not really uh, running any interesting macros only trinket with Pillar of Frost. So let me let me show you my macros I'm using. Ne don't macro trinket with ammunition limb, because you want to use ammunition limb at the start, and until you start using pillar, you're gonna lose like a few seconds from the trinket. So never macro trinket with ammunition limb. Just keep it by itself. Only macro trinket with pillar of frost, especially if you're running the the blood trinket from. Under root because the more time you wait on the trinket, the less strength you're gonna lose. So the <clears throat> so here's my empowered rune weapon macro. I mean it's very big, but some of these are not even working. Like dancing rune weapon. This is for blood decay. 
but this is the empowered weapon and this is the trinket macro actually you should remove it to be honest i should remove this macro because you you want only to macro a trinket with pillar of a frost and this is the the potion you can you can leave potion with empowered weapon because potion have a long cool long duration like 30 second and yeah this is another trinket I shouldn't, i'm not using this anymore so yeah, the only thing you should macro with empower and weapon is the potion and if you're using another trinket. So this trinket, uh, you should just keep it with Pillar of a Frost. You can also macro the, uh, the Rise Dead. Yeah, you can also put Rise Dead in there. So whenever you press empower and weapon, you also spawn the your add. And for the pillar macro, as I said, it's just pillar, uh, trinket. Yeah, this is an another trinket, but this is a trinket veil of animated blood and also rise dead. You can have rise dead on all your abilities. It doesn't matter because you only, uh, you want to spawn it just for damage. So you can macro it with pillar or power weapon or ammunition limb if you want. But for the trinket, just keep uh, leave it with ammunition, leave it with pillar of frost only. You can also macro potion if you want with the pillar of a frost, but I prefer just to leave it with empower and weapons since potions have a five minute cooldown. So it's better to use it when you have the maximum amount of cooldowns just to use it at the same time. So I prefer to leave it with empower and weapon. And this is just the macros I'm using, guys. You can also use the macro Nemosis Winter with guest with a start attacking. Because sometimes if you are out of combat and then you press your Moses Winter, your character will not attack. So you can put start attack macro with your Moses Winter. So whenever you press the Moses Winter, you're you're gonna start attacking. So here it is. So cast your Moses Winter and then the slash start attack. So you can start melee attack. And this can be very good because if you get lucky on the first hit, you can get killing machine broke right on the first hits and this sometimes happened to me because your character start attack when you press obliterate now sometimes when you start a fight you start with remorseless winter and then you press obliterate so there's like a half a second or like a second you're gonna miss one melee attack so if you put the start attack with remorseless winter you're gonna immediately start auto attacking and you might get the killing machine broke right on pull Alright guys, so now we're gonna start with the single target rotation. So the single target is much simpler than AoE because we don't have to worry about the Glacial Advance or Death and Decay. The only abilities that you're gonna press is Obliterate, uh, Frost Strike and Dry Me Brock, Falling Blast, let's see. And also press the Master Winter on cooldown, so not um, like so many buttons to be pressing. So when you're starting a single target fight on boss fight, you want to start with Remorseless Winter and then Ampunition Limb. And then you want to press Empower and Weapon and the the Rhyme Brock from Ampunition Limb, you want to use it to get a Killing Machine Brock inside Pillar of a Frost. So let me show you here. So you're going to the boss, you press Remorseless Winter and then you press Ampunition Limb and then Empower and Weapon and then you press Pillar and then you press the Rhyme Brock so you get the first killing machine. And just you're doing the, your normal uh, obliteration rotation, killing machine. Uh, I'm lagging a bit. So yeah, you press the Frost Strike, killing machine, Frost Strike, killing machine, or Rhyme, killing machine. And you press the Master Winter on cooldown. But just for you to know, never press the Master Winter inside Pillar of Refrot. Uh, inside Pillar. So, if, for example, if you forget to press Remorseless Winter and you press Pillar, just do your normal rotation and forget about uh, Remorseless Winter. Especially on single target or like, like less target mobs. The only time you can press Remorseless Winter inside Pillar is when you're fighting like 7 mobs or above. Because Remorseless Winter has all the mobs, so on 
at some time when you're fighting like so many targets your master splinter is going to do even more damage than obliterate uh, hitting three targets but on single target and like uh, five targets or less you don't want to press your master splinter inside your pillar uh, inside your pillar window just do your normal rotation by hitting cross strike killing machine or glacier advanced killing machine but of course you, you should always press your master splinter before pillar so even if your master splinter have like a few seconds just wait until your master splinter is ready and then you press pillar of your frost or aoe for single target it doesn't really matter because your master splinter barely do any damage on single target as you see your master splinter is doing way less damage so you don't have to worry too much about that you forget the, to press your master splinter on single target fight all right, so I'm gonna do the rotation again this time a bit faster. So I'm going to the boss from also winter. I'm gonna shun limb or open and just frost strike. Also, make sure that you press your rhyme block so you can apply razor eyes because we don't have a glacial advance, so we need to press rhyme block so we can apply razor eyes. I don't know why I'm lagging a bit. And that's it. Press pillar. When you're out of runes, you press frost strike. You should also have a weak aura to track how many killing machine blocks you have. Uh, it's gonna be useful. I don't know why I'm not doing it, but. That's it guys, this is your single target. It's very simple. Just press Frost Strike, uh, Killing Machine, and press Rhyme whenever you have it, because Rhyme is going to do more damage than Frost Strike, because we're running uh, two points into Icy Breaker. And also it's going to apply Razor Eyes, and also buff the damage of, uh, of Pillar, because of the tier set. So your top priority when, when you play on single target is Killing Machine, now, if you have two stacks of Killing Machine, you have uh, you, you must press Killing Machine first. If you have one stack and you have Rhyme Brock, you press Rhyme and then you press the Killing Machine. So, if you are if you have just one stack of Killing Machine, you can press Frost Strike or press Rhyme. But if you have two stacks of Killing Machine, you should only press Killing Machine until you have one stack or have no or have no stacks. So Killing Machine have the, the highest priority on a single target, then Rhyme, then a Frost Strike. It doesn't really matter when you use your Dragon uh, on single target, because you don't want to lose a Killing Machine Brock to use your Dragon, because you're going to do more damage with the Killing Machine Brock. As you can see the difference with the Holding Blast, like the average is almost 80k, and the Frost Strike average is 55 now Frost Strike have a chance to give you Killing Machine a Brock, so it's not completely useless. But you always want to not miss any Holding Blast uh, hits. Now this is 18 cast of Holding Blast, and this is 30 cast of Frost Strike. So you see the damage difference that Holding Blast is doing way more damage. So never miss any Rhyme Brock on single target. You also want to count Avalanche, but Avalanche is not that, not that great on single target. But still, you want to so you can apply... Uh, razor eyes stacks on the on the boss and this is the only way to apply razor eyes so you should always not miss any rhyme brock so you can always have five stacks on the boss if you lose your five stacks you're gonna lose so much damage you're gonna go because you're gonna lose 15 percent uh, even more you're gonna lose 18 percent uh, magic damage on the boss so that's a lot of damage you're gonna lose so yeah always keep tracking your how many stacks you have on uh, from razor eyes if you don't know what is razor eyes it's the rune forge 
this one. So each stack gives you 3% th th more mag magical damage. And whenever you press Rhyme, you're going to get one stack on the, on the targets, either on AoE or single target, because we're running the... because Avalanche now apply Razor Eyes. And that's it guys, this is the obliteration guide. I hope it was useful for you, for people that is uh, new to the spec. Now this build is gonna be probably the best build for raiding and mythic plus at this point. It's very safe, especially in mythic raid. You don't have to worry too much about losing your breath and losing so much damage. And also still doing the same single target as a breath. So obliteration build is very strong for all all like all fights AoE single target two targets uh, three targets so so yeah you want to play this build on in every on everything so i hope this uh, this guide was useful for you and if i didn't if i forget to say anything or say something wrong ask me in the comments and i will answer uh, everyone you can also ask me in discord and mention me on discord because I'm more, uh, I am more active on Discord than on YouTube, so I will immediately answer you on Discord. And I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.